Hello, and in this video, we will discuss about the uh, second module in our class, which is network security. So uh, I will go ahead now and start my slides. Okay, so first thing that we need to notice here is we already uh, suppose that we have some background about network security, but today we'll discuss about components, process, and approach about network security with an eye on the data, the things that will matter in this class. So our outline today is like this. We'll talk about the network access control. We'll discuss the antivirus and the anti-malware software. Then we will refresh our memory and put a definition for firewalls, VPNs, intrusion detection systems, intrusion prevention systems, network security monitoring, as well as vulnerability management systems. Also, we'll talk about the security information and event management system. First of all, what is the definition of a network security? Network security is any activity designed to protect the usability and the integrity of the network and the data inside the network. So this is a global definition of the network security. But the important, here, the important thing about network security is we try to minimize the risk upon the added value to the network because there's no way that we can have a 100% secure system. There's no way to reach something called perfect security situation in the network. So this is the actually meaning behind the network security. And to extend the definition here, it's always include some work and labor to be done in the hardware, software, as well as to target different variety of threats, how to stop them from entering and spreading inside the network, and also what is the effective way to manage the access to the network, including, including uh, authorized access and non-authorized access. There's different types of network security, and typically we can define them to physical network security, technical network security, and administrative network security. Physical, we talk about devices, locks, uh, access control, uh, anything that have physical protection. And this is the most important part of any security system. You have to make sure that your system is secured physically. Technically, about we talk about the logical and the um, virtual connection to your network. Administrative part is who's authorized to do what because we have more than 80% of the sabotage happen in internal sabotage inside the network. So we need to protect our data administratively, technically, and physically. However, even the data can be um, presented in a logical way only, basically, but we need also to protect it physically. So let's talk about protection in more details and we'll start with the network access control. What is a network access control? Network access control, which sometimes you call it a NAC, is solution uh, support network visibility and access management through policy enforcement on devices and users for a corporate network. What does it mean? Actually, in simple ways, who is supposed to see what? That's all. Uh, and when? Initially, it was just a key, a key of an office, a key of a, even a machine or a, or a PC. Then it's extended to username and password. And then it's accessibility upon function, accessibility for some resource upon time also. All of that, including the network access control. And right now, it's a growing market. There's specific IT solutions to provide you with the whole solution of the NAC over your environment. And as you can see, the numbers in two years almost doubled the number of the annual revenue. Access control can be defined in these five parts, is the uh, compatibility, the identity, and access management, guest action, uh, guest access, because recently, 
you cannot just close your network and don't allow any user to come and use your Wi-Fi in your organization. They will be annoyed or some of them will not do business with you anymore because Wi-Fi become essential now. So we need also policy how to use and handle the guest access as well as the added value and the governance of the entire organization. What to do in every action, including designing the security network, designing the network monitoring solutions, and designing a policy what to do next in case of an attack or something like that. So to combine the uh, network access control, you can see it actually in this diagram. It's, it's a combined of three, ta three main activities, control, visibility, and compliance. Between them, it can be access, baseline, and enforcement, and the endpoint, this is where you can reach to your access control system. Example of the access control system, there's a lot of software available there, commercial and open source. Microsoft have a lot of products for the network security access, which is the most popular now, but the most popular and secure one is the Cisco uh, products. Example, Cisco Identity Service Engine or they call it I sometimes. Because this type of hardware is not only giving you permissions per user, but actually aggregates the idea as the information of the user, location, time, device type, and even the device health status or the scanning of the device. Combining them, it can give you alerts what's going on or if there's any unauthorized access. Anytime you implement or build a network access control, you need to make sure that you have these desired features. You might have some of them, but it's recommended to have all of them. One of them is decentralized management. You need only one, one interface, one entity to do it, to do all the management for you. You don't want to jump between Windows one to another to get just one configuration on or more to one part. Also, it has to be rich contextual uh, defined on identity and the business policy. You need to apply also a type of access control, starting from the user access to a specific file on the server or a specific server on the service network or even a specific resource, as well as entering the building itself. All of that can be covered under the umbrella of the access control. The data of access control, you always will need to get back to it whenever you have an attack or vulnerability that happened in your network or threat that was uh, vulnerable and somebody attacked it. And uh, you will always go back to the access control. So make sure that you have a back backup there to get your needed information with time, stamp, and so on. Also, the desired feature is the um, to have a network as easy to connect to any new network. If you're expanding or you're changing devices or upgrading, you need to make sure that your NAC can able to handle these updates and usually put a type of policy or group policy to handle the activity right there. As well as keep in mind, we need to keep the guest lifecycle management available. Whenever the guests come to our network, how we're going to make them connect our network, what resources are available, if they will use only internet, what type of internet, what is a proxy, what is a firewall, how to direct the specific traffic. Are we want to make it adjacent to our internal traffic or put them in different VLAN, for example. So we need to take care of all of the life cycle of the guest management because also as soon as you open a guest network access, you're already increasing your vulnerability right away. Also, make sure there's the streamlined devices onboarding features available and you have to have some type of triple A service. Triple A is not the insurance service, it's okay. You tell me what is that triple A in network access. This would be a small assignment for you just for your information okay other than that there's another feature that we also need to keep in mind is for example we need to make sure that our next system have something to support the certificate authority inside the network we need to make um, a device proofing um, mechanism inside the network access control we need to have 
connection to the Active Directory so we can import and export information from Active Directory towards Network Access Control. That will make your life so easy if you have this small feature. Also make sure that you have a monitoring and troubleshooting tools available with the main console of management, as well as certification upgraded in this tool. So URT, which is mean you can upgrade very fast with your small file, plug and play and so on. And additionally, keep in mind IP version 6 support is the future and the current actually, current future I would say. Some of the new concepts that started to be a part of any standard network access control is the, as we discussed, the guest uh, or contractors access, the BYOD or bring your own device policy because this has become very popular, especially now in the time of uncertainty with the health status of the whole world. A lot of people started to work online, so Everybody uses his or her laptop, and this way you can make your ac your network actually un uh, away from your control. So you need to put a policy for that. Also, Internet of Things, we know a lot of devices now just IoT, and most of them lack of good protection policies or good protection capabilities. So we need to take care to not let any IoT inside, you know, because you never know what traffic they send in the ideal time and so on. So best way is one of them is to monitor them for a while. If okay, put in a separate network and the network that you use using a different subdomain or something like that. Also, incidents uh, response. It become a part of NEC, not only uh, IPS, for example, as well as for it's very important for the medical devices that are connected to the Wi-Fi. Some of the users might need them and you need to actually make the availability of these devices uh, live all the time, as well as uh, it can cause really much trouble than just regular devices. So make sure that you have a correct and NAC for these devices. The second part will be the antivirus and the anti-malware software. 